Hello, it's Graham Johnson. I'm putting together a quick uh, informal movie here for some of our alpha testers to see if they can duplicate this procedure that will help, uh, help us prepare the software for an upcoming visualization contest to visualize HIV using AutoPack software. And I want to see if you're able to take advantage of the instancing technology we have to replace objects in the scene with your own customizations of those objects. To begin with, uh, so again, this is for 3D Studio Max alpha testers and uh, Maya alpha testers to see if they can duplicate this procedure I'm doing in Cinema 4D uh, using whatever systems are available to them there. So to begin with, please uh, open AutoPack and load the HIV test file. And you probably will have these pieces of geometry turned off by default, so your scene should look about like this when you load it. Again, this is a very early version of the model. It'll be a lot more complex in the end, but hopefully the graphic user interface will be simpler as well. And our goal today is to just replace these uh, blue and green spike proteins. These are uh, blue proteins with green sugar, uh, sugar glycosylation bound to the surface of them. We want to replace those with a custom model. And to begin with, we're going to do a little in-scene in version of that. I'm just going to click and make a cube inside of Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you where these models lie in Cinema 4D. So we have all of the root geometry hidden. So if I, if I click on one of these spike proteins and I unfold my scene hierarchy, I can see that this guy is called ISUTM. Please ignore the cat in the background. And if I click on the instance, I see that it refers to this mesh down here, which is the ISUTM, and that it has all the, the core geometry hidden down here, and that what these are are actually just instances of that geometry with different matrices, giving them different positions and orientations, but not using redundant geometry. So. I'm going to replace or augment that root geometry with just that simple cube that I made. And you see that it immediately gets instance into every case. Let's just make a material so that stands out a little bit better. So we've got these white cubes riding on top of our other guys, and if we manipulate the cube in any way, make some nice little trees that uh, significantly simplify the geometry. And then we could opt if we wanted to to turn off a more complex version of the geometry. And of course, we could replace that with the original blue color, for example. Ignore that texture error, please. That's a bug we're having with... Let me try to fix that right now. When I render, everything is happy. That's a different bug that has nothing to do with our, our goal today. Okay, so I've replaced it with the basic cube, and now I want to show you a better way to, to work on that, which is I can grab that root geometry, and let me just give you a little bit better idea of how this root geometry system works and to see if you can find this in Maya or in Cinema 4D. 
So in my hierarchy in C4D, I'm sorry, in 3D Max, in, in Cinema 4D, we have the model itself, which is all of the instances that are replications of the root geometry. And if I turn that off and turn on the visibility of the root geometry itself, we'll zoom into our cube here so you can see a little bit better. I'm all behind the cube so you can see what's under it. I'll turn back on the ISUTM since that's such a recognizable protein. You can see these are all sitting here at the origin of the scene. They all have uh, polygonal models as meshes, but anything can be under that, under some parent object, and then that parent object is referenced into the instances in the scene. So we can replace whatever we want under there. Again, in this case, we could put a cube. We could put a sphere into that object. And then when we turn back on the instances and zoom back out to where we were, we see that there's a sphere everywhere, there's a spike protein. And again, we can modify that, in this case, just changing the position of the sphere and decrease the radius a little bit by hand. So we can make simplified little trees, little geometries, any way we want to. But let's take this to a higher level. We have this other tool embedded Python molecular viewer. So I'm just going to copy that root geometry parent, go to a new scene and paste it. Let's get rid of our sphere and our cube. And let's start a new EPMV session. And if you are a Maya user, you could use molecular Maya for this same process. So I'm going to prepare EPMV a little bit. I want to not center the molecule. That's the only change I need to make. And I want to collect 2x7r. That's 2x from the optimized protein membrane database. And click fetch. And we'll see a small ribbon model. So this spike protein is a complicated protein that comes in two parts. We'll try to fix that for the actual contest to make it one PDB file. But I'm using the actual original data set here. And uh, it's a little complicated because the optimized protein membrane database brings this uh, root data in along the x-axis and eventually will turn it so that it matches the defaults for autofill root geometry for surfaces, which is to shoot along the y-axis. And we'll do that at the end. So first, in EPMV, I've loaded, we're just going to replace this part of the protein. That's the, uh, the GP41, um, which is the, the transmembrane section of the protein. And let's ha uh, enhance this a little bit. We're going to color it using the rainbow from N to C, and let's put a surface representation on it. Now you're going to see a little bit of extra geometry in here, and I'll show you how to get rid of that. The optimized protein membrane database puts in a little mock bilayer, a ring of carbon atoms that you can see here at the base and we want to get rid of that. So the easiest way to do that, because we don't want that to be in our final model, because ultimately this HIV will have a real bilayer, we're going to use keyword amino acids, and then just prompt a redraw of our molecular surface by clicking or changing any one of these parameters. But I'm just going to click in the probe radius box and hit return. And that takes care of that. If I render this, we've still got it colored by, let's color this from N to C as well. So it matches our ribbon model underneath, and let's make that ribbon model visible by changing the transparency. I'm going to choose a frontal texture, invert the knots so it's opaque on the outside. And I don't want it to be too invisible. I'll turn off the specular lighting. So when I render this, we should get a little glass outline colorized to match. That works nicely. 
and we'll just turn off the specularity of everybody. So now, I said we need to make this match our scene, and I know that I just need to rotate along the b-axis, minus 90, and now we've got our stock matching the original GP41, and we can hide the original GP41, just using C4D. So now I've got a fancy, very detailed version underneath. And to clean up the file a little bit, we'll drop this into here so that we can easily cut and paste it into the other scene. And let's go ahead and clean up our top geometry. Instead of going more complex, we'll go much simpler. So I'm just going to make a, a triangle here. Orient that along the top view to match. Roughly the top of our little spike protein glycosylated spike protein that looks a bit like a tree. I'm just going for an ultra simple variation of that. Uh, so I'll just crush this to a polygon, and I will extrude it and cap on the bottom. Set it up a little bit. Let's scale that. Go up one more notch. And scale that in there. So we'll drop that in, and we'll get rid of our original complex model, in this case just by hiding it, but we'll keep that blue color, I'm sure we'll keep the green color. It'll be pretty, but it'll stand out. And I just want to remove unused textures, duplicate textures to simplify our scene as much as possible. So now we'll copy this. Go back to our original scene, paste it. I'm just going to drag the whole guy under the original guy and delete all the original information. So now, if we were to animate this, we could, for example, you can see that we've got our new spikes replacing the old ones. So let's go ahead and add a camera. And if for the contest, scene camera, camera, let's say for the contest somebody wanted to zoom in to the spike protein at frame 30, they come a little bit closer. Seventy. So I recorded one more from here. Okay. So we see from out here we've got a low resolution model. For part of their story, for whatever reason, they want to zoom in and see part of the high resolution structure. They're able to do that just by replacing those elements and using the instancing system. So please let me know if there's any way you're able to do this with Maya or with 3D Studio Max, and we'll try to automate as much of that process as possible. Thanks for your time.